Right, so here we are again. I've um, I've finally going out on a long journey after winter hibernation. Um, I mean, it's still going to be chilly, so this is where it's going to be interesting: is what kind of range I can get uh, this time of year. Uh, excuse the train a moment. That's the only downside to where I am, in the middle of nowhere, apart from that train line. Um, but, uh, what I'm going to be interested to find out is a couple of things. One of them is that I've taken the solar power off the top of the roof, because it was only giving five mile a day um, extra. But, with the overhang that was coming off of here, that was causing a load of wind resistance. And um, with the fact that the trailer is now within the car, and if you have a look here, there's not too much of an overlap. Um, it's, it's not going too high up above the car, so wind resistance should be minimized. Therefore, my range should be a little better. But this is winter weather, so um, I mean, it's not a deep, deep winter. So I expect my range with the trailer to still be around 100 miles, but we'll find out. Um, I'm going to Wales, uh, which is about 150 miles trip. So it'll be about two or three charge stops, depending. One other interesting thing to note is that I'm able to charge up to 54.6 in this weather and considering that these are old batteries, um, like recycled cells, that's pretty amazing that it's still holding that. I mean we're not too chilly, we're probably about 6, well probably about 8, eight degrees, so we're not, we're not all that cold at the moment. So I'm just pulling out of the drive now and uh, then we're on our way. There's my gas mask for when I'm <laughs> when I'm on the motorway. Just because I'm a bit... Uh, the fumes and the pollution and I just prefer to... Yeah, there's the brakes because I've been sitting over... Every time I sit overnight they squeak a little bit. Um, but yes, yeah, so... I'm almost ready to go. Final checks and I will be on my way to the middle of Wales. Okay, so we've just reached Asda Redditch. That was 105.2 kilometers um, on the clock, so just over 60 miles. I was reaching the end of my <laughs> range. I was down to 47. I probably had another 10 miles left in me or so, but the estimated range is is around 80, is around 80 miles. Um, I did a few calculations to see how we were doing once we got here. It was a very hard journey because a lot of it was uphill and towing the trailer um, on the motorway I was probably averaging 40 miles an hour, um, which wasn't terrible, but uh, it could have been faster. Um, winds against you things like that but um, that part of the journey is over the next part is getting onto the M5 and and then getting on to getting off off the motorways altogether and it's just country roads um, after that so so far so good um, winter range of course is less um, there's there is still a bit of drag with the trailer I'm not able to push up to 50 mile an hour that easily um, which is understandable um, but I think I am definitely getting a better range than I would have done with the... Uh... Oh look, here comes the leaf. <laughs> um, so I'm getting a better range than I would have gotten um, with, the, uh, with, the solar, with the solar power on top of the trailer. So I've, do I've done 120 miles, I mean I've got, I've, I mean 100, 140, 150 miles is the uh, expected journey. I've done 60 so I'm just under halfway in a sense. Um, I've just got another, I'm going to do, I'm going to take it a bit easy in the future. I'm going to do about another 40 miles. I might even stop at Tesco um, and ride hard till Tesco and then uh, charge it up, get to, get near to Kington and then that should be the last 40 miles from my last stretch to my destination. So um, yeah, so far so good. Uh, journey's been pretty smooth, just a lot of in-your-face wind 
like pretty hard wind on the motorway which has kind of reduced my range drastically but it's about it's about 8.6 miles per um, per kilowatt uh, no it's 8.6 miles per volt sorry at the moment so I'm well en route um, to get to Wales I've just done another 20 miles just to get to the Tesco pod points because it's a free top-up charge I charge for a couple of hours at Asda and um, just because there's another supermarket there's toilets in there it makes it simple so I'm charging up again here for uh, top it right up and then I'm going to stop at one more polar at uh, Herefordshire Council in Kington and that should give me the last stretch 25 miles to my final destination um, so the remarkable thing about this is it's 150 miles but because of how I've planned the journey it's only going to cost me about £3.70 um, so compared to how much you pay on fuel to do the same journey that's nothing so that's another bonus of electric cars obviously and um, obviously because of mine because of the size of it and um, and the efficiencies so yes there we go I'm just charging I'm topping up here and then making the final stretch so I couldn't get a video last night because it was very dark <laughs> and it was just kind of focused on getting set up but I've been let into this old stable here um, got everything I need electric supply etc but we are actually in the middle of the Welsh of a Welsh valley just look at those views so I made the journey, no problem. I stopped at that last place, um, charged for an hour, and uh, and then made the last stretch up here, down a very narrow road that got worse as you <laughs> the further you went up it. But uh, no, this is my home for a few days, but, uh, with a, with a bunch of other foragers um, having a quick meeting and then having a just doing a few activities together for a few days. It's beautiful. So I've um, the journey itself was great. It was very tiring because being on the road for 9:30 till 8:30, almost 12 hours on the road, um, 11 hours. But the journey wasn't bad. It's just a lot of waiting for charging and whatnot with the lower range with the trailer. But uh, and also with the winter range, so I wasn't able to do, say, like 60 miles in one go, then it would have only been two charge stops. Um, it actually works out better doing 40 miles than charging. Just to, because the main problem is, is that it's not about um, the issue with uh, the charge stops themselves, it's just that they're so far apart, there's not many charging, there's not much charging on the route to here. There's only two chargers I can use between here <laughs> And, well, my half my journey, um, about 70 odd miles, is only two chargers that are available, so I have to time it perfectly. So there's no skipping those stops at all. So I'm about to set off um, on the, on Friday morning, quite early, you can see that it's quite frosty today, so... We are relatively, it's relatively cold, so that would be interesting to test the range. Um, I mean, we're starting at 53.9 once we've reached the main road. Um, I don't know if I reset that. There we go. See what we do when, I mean, I'm probably not going to record it on this, this first stretch, because I'm only doing 20 miles to the first charge point, um, getting out of Wales. Um, Tesco pod points are apparently down um, good job I checked my Facebook last night and saw a post because so I was aiming to go to one of the Tesco's so that's going to throw me off a little bit I'm going to have to go to um, a bit further down the road when I reach um, Worcester however um, I think we're going to be okay I'm going to aim about 40 miles max uh, when we're driving today um, between charges and uh, just take it easy so yeah it's been a great few days and um, it's just been full of foraged food and 
um, great people. So what I'll probably try and do is post a few photos after this short clip um, so you can see what kind of went on during the event. But uh, so yeah, now is the time for me to do the journey back home. So we just stopped outside of Waitrose for another quick break. I did the 25 miles to um, Kington. That was the hardest part of the journey because you're all up in there. It's very up and down and very steep gradients. So it's a slow journey. That was another leaf. I've seen two leaves come in the car park today, so that's quite good. Um, yeah, two leaves. There's another one. Um, but no, I've... Um, I've done uh, 60, 60 something miles into the journey and uh, I'm just charging up here. Uh, the next stop is at, um, the next stop is Stratford up on Avon. I'm going to a distillery, charge up there and hopefully I can do the rest of the journey straight back. So it's been quite pleasant. Um, it's not been as exhaustive trying to do a full, um, trying to do a full uh, 60 something miles and worrying about hitting the end of the range because once you get down to 47 volts you're uh, you're losing some of the um, you're losing some of the uh, higher end uh, uh, speed etc so when I go below 48 it's struggling to kind of maintain the speeds that I want to on main roads uh, so yeah so that, that, that so that makes the journey a lot more pleasant because I can put my foot down a little bit more maintain 40 on most roads the leaf here 23 um, kilowatt hour model now um, the, the lady who came here just now she uh, she had some problems uh, this is the first time that she uh, plugged the uh, leaf into a polar and it's actually, she's actually a she's a new EV owner, so that's quite that's quite amazing. Um, we had a nice chat, and I helped her get the charge started on her car. Um, an elderly lady who uh, who's just gone, yeah, she decided that she wanted to go from diesel and um, and finally get an electric. So, so I just kind of talked her through the charge points at the front of the car, what they do, because um, she has got a uh, Shadamo on the front too. And um, she thought she was doing something wrong because she wasn't getting that many miles out of it. But then it's the winter range and how you drive and all that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, had a lovely chat. But it's actually kind of great to see um, to see more and more people adopting electric cars. I know these leaves are cut, these leaves are coming down in price now, and uh, I'm seeing more and more around on the roads. And. Uh, yeah, it's such a nice community, um, the UV community. You can you can just pull up if you're stuck. Just ask someone and they'll quite happily help you out. And, and you're on your way. And I also recommended her to go and see Oxen EVs because I think that's the closest um, EV group that's around here. Um, just just to kind of help, just to kind of help her find her way uh, with a new electric car and become more familiar with things and speak to people who can help her in our area. So, yeah, just going to relax here and be on my way. So I'm charging up at my final uh, location before I should be able to get home. Um, just at Stratford Park and Ride Station. It's only one pound to park for the whole day. And uh, right next to here is an i3. And uh, so I thought I wouldn't be able to get a charge here. The, uh, it said it was charging, but as I got closer, 
um, I was lucky so here we are um, but yes after after another 40 miles I should finally make it home I also had a rather unfortunate um, a rather unfortunate uh, encounter uh, one of the points on zap map just down the road from here was listed uh, as a place to charge however uh, <laughs> a guy came up to me not so friendly wondering what I was doing so uh, unfortunately that place is no longer available and um, that was at the distillery um, apparently it was put down as the distillery's charge points but it actually belongs to a building next door so um, unfortunately that one is off the off the cards so uh, yeah just gonna just gotta stay here for maybe an hour or two and it's slightly better going this time I should be arriving home around six to seven ish uh, which is roughly around the same charging time, but it's been a much more pleasant journey because I've avoided the motorway and I've stuck to I've stuck to country roads and not so busy roads. So yeah, it's been a pleasant ride. So I've um, just arrived home. Now it's quite dark, so you can't see much. But um, the journey back was okay. Um, in rush hour, it's not so great, even on the quieter roads. Um, had the odd lorry beep or something like that. But uh, the journey in general was good. Um, I was, it was 10 hours, so 11, it was 11, 12 hours on the way there. So um, I shortened it by two hours. Um, not sure how. It may have just been the way that I timed the stops, etc. Um, it was about five hours driving and about five hours charging. And... I mean, I actually saw, I saw about five leaves on the road, um, on the way back, and, and I saw four leaves and one BMW i3. Um, I mean, there's a long way before electric cars are slowly taking over the roads, but I suppose there'd be more in certain areas like Milton Keynes where the infrastructure's there. Um, but, I mean, it's slowly getting there. And uh, it was nice today to meet the old lady who uh, needed help with her car because she's just bought in. She she just she just bought a leaf and um, had to learn how to charge. Uh, but yes, yeah, so that's the uh, that's the rundown. I mean, it's been a great few days just spending time in the Welsh countryside. Um, and in terms of mileage on the way back. It's looking like I'm pushing around 8.5 miles per volt, which is basically what I was getting in the summer with the uh, solar power on the roof, which had the extra wind resistance. So I suspect I could probably push it to 9 to 10, 9 or 10 miles per volt um, in the summer, but we'll just have to see, of course, um, battery degradation, etc. So uh, we'll we'll have to see how it's we'll have to see how it's holding up in the summer, but. Um, yeah, journey's over and it's time to rest and relax and um, yeah, there we go.